In this video, I'll be making a sand rammer for my sand molds. I finally settled on a basic shape. It is made out of two identical sides that can be split for casting. I had to break this up a little bit more so that it would fit in the vertical build area of the 3D printer. This joint will give the parts a bit of a mechanical interlock while increasing the surface area for the CA glue. I gave everything a quick once over to remove any major bumps in the print. Once these are glued together, I can sand and fill some areas and flatten the mating faces of the split pattern. I am using high build automotive primer to fill in the lines of the 3D print rather than just sanding them off completely. This is much less labor intensive and allows me to correct small imperfections in the print after a couple coats. Next I needed to make a new flask to hold my sand rammer mold. The split pattern is registered by these two steel pins. Here I am compacting the Petrobond sand with a simple stick. This has worked great for me. It's just a bit more work since the stick doesn't weigh anything and doesn't have very much surface area. The talc powder will keep the two halves of the mold from sticking together. These X's will transfer to the opposite side of the mold. This way I can easily locate the sprues in the cope above the runners in the drag. When ramming up a mold, you want to do most of the ramming with the angled end of the rammer. This will push the sand down and away towards the pattern and the flask. If you just used a flat rammer, you would make layers of sand that can come apart at the strata and would be less compacted against the more vertical sides of the part. The flat end is used to prepare the mold for striking it off flat. Now to form the gates and runners. And now to cut the sprue and riser.
Now to melt some brass. The salvage yard had a bunch of these yellow brass fittings. It was hard to bring myself to melt them down. There wasn't a big difference between melting brass and melting aluminum, aside from a longer wait, higher temps, and toxic fumes. You can see how much dross I ended up with. I did degas or use flux of any kind. At this point, I thought that I'd probably had a bad cast since there was no brass in the riser. This is my first brass cast, so I might have needed the metal to be hotter, and it probably would have helped to have the mold warmed up a bit as well. I decided to film the shakeout anyway. I actually ended up with an entirely usable part. This dark film is over the entire surface of the part. This is just a tarnish that will come off in the next step. Here I'll highlight the grip detail with some flat black paint. And now I'm making a ram sand mold for an aluminum sand rammer by using my brass sand rammer to ram sand over my 3D printed sand rammer pattern. The brass sand rammer is a bit too heavy at over five and a half pounds. I think the aluminum version is a bit closer to ideal at around two pounds. <laughs> 